Hi, everyone. This is Anang. I am a senior product manager or senior program manager with Microsoft. Uh, I've been with Microsoft for almost 13 years. And today I'm going to talk about um, why do we neglect users in enterprise application. And this, uh, this entire, pre uh, entire presentation is uh, based on my experience with different application uh, I have experience in, uh, in the organizations or um, you know, the process uh, which I took in order to build uh, application in enterprise uh, enterprises. So with that, let me start. Um, so this uh, presentation is divided into three parts. So first part is we're gonna understand, um, you know, uh, what are the factors which causes us to neglect users in, in an enterprise application uh, and, uh, you know, the potential impact they have on the applications. Uh, the second part, we're going to cover uh, what are the problems we in, uh, encounter, uh, which we understand in the point number one. How do we fix them or how do we resolve them in order to you know, uh, bring user into the entire, uh, you know, design process to deliver a better experience. And the last point is uh, a little bit about how do we measure the success of uh, these enterprise applications. Okay. So, uh, so let me quickly, uh, you know, qualify what is an enterprise application. When I, you know, I'm going to keep repeating this terminology in throughout the uh, presentation. Uh, so, enterprise application is a phrase which is generally used to um, for an application which is used in an organization to solve enterprise problems. Um, so, in 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 an organization, you would typically see two different types of, um, you know enterprise application, one is a B2B, a licensed product, which companies buy from some other organization in order to uh, solve their problems. The other one is in-house developed products. Um, so when we talk about B2B products, uh, these are uh, generally well uh, designed, well thought through product because these are licensed and uh, somebody's investing money in that. Um, so we're not gonna talk much about B2B, but we're gonna focus on um, the in-house product and the problems we face on, on on such applications. And before I move into uh, move to you know the problems, I want to highlight a statement that you know um, the enterprise don't have problems. It is the people in an organization or an enterprise who have problems, and these applications are used to solve those problems. Uh, you know, per se, enterprise have no no such problems. And yet the most common definition you would see is the you know, a product that assists the organization in solving enterprise problem. And so in the definition itself, we have removed people. Um, and I think that's part of the problem, you know, why users are uh, you know, mostly left uh, or not considered appropriately when we design an enterprise application. Okay. So then let's understand why do we you know, miss or why do we neglect users? So we're gonna focus on three uh, most common uh, organization structures we see in medium to large companies. Um, so by any means, this is not an exhaustive um, model. Uh, many companies can be uh, different. Uh, these are the, some of the most common ones. And uh, if you work in a medium to large organization, you would be able to relate to this uh, uh, one or more models. So generally in uh, in model number one, what happens, there is a centralized IT engineering department where the product manager sits and then they have direct uh, relationship with the business users and they, the user also interact with the you know, business leadership as well as the product leadership also have a relationship with the uh, business leadership here. Uh, if you look at the model number two, it's slightly different. Um, uh, although there is a centralized uh, engineering or IT engineering group, uh, the product manager deals with somebody called as business program manager or business product manager. And um, the business manager, uh, generally, they interact with the business user who would actually uh, use the application in day in, day out. Uh, the multiple layer of um, leadership in this uh, model, there is a product uh, IT engineering leadership as well as the stakeholder leadership and uh, Plus, the, you would see the uh, leaders um, from the business users side also. And the third one is um, also, it's a little offshoot of the model number two, where the product manager deals with the business uh, uh, program manager or business manager. 
and the business manager deals with a you know small subset of the business users sometimes they are sme or they carefully chosen uh, business users and this engagement also has uh, a large number of uh, or heavy leadership engagement and then these cohort of users they interact with the business users who are who may be located in many different uh, countries or you know different uh, geographic locations now each of these uh, model come with their own problems uh, so let's understand these problems one by one and the model number one which is the most simplest of the uh, model where the product manager has access to the business users directly um, so this is one of the oldest model and one of the easiest model to work with because as a product manager you have access to the users um, the only thing is the engagement uh, sometime leadership engagement is is uh, slightly higher but otherwise this is one of the most preferred way of working however this is not uh, very common nowadays um, but if you go to the model number 2 um, you would see that the because there are far too many leaders in the entire ecosystem the engagement becomes uh, leadership heavy here so leadership have uh, has their own opinion they they provide uh, they ask too many updates they would they have their own version of the problem um, the other one is uh, because you are the product manager is not interacting with the business user directly um, you know it, there is a chance that the product manager is not understanding the real problem or the real user because the the requirements comes through a business product manager or the business uh, pm uh, sometime from the leadership directions also and uh, and and in 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 some of the organization which are like you know small to large um, large sorry medium to large organization which are technology uh, companies um, people tend to choose technology beforehand even before they understand the uh, the user problem they they set their mind to choose or use one of the technology and they they go by that rather than you know first understanding the user problem and then finding out what is the best possible solution they have uh, in that now uh, the model number 3 is as i said is a offshoot of problem number, model number 2 where the business product manager engages with the uh, smaller subset which is a cohort of our sme users from the business side and these people represent their user base um, and since they don't uh, they're not the product managers they don't have the you know um, skill set of how you do user interviews how do you understand problem uh, or the you know root case root cause of the problems um, they provide their version of the problem to the business problem manager uh, product manager or and then business product manager provides that those uh, requirements to the product manager so the the entire requirements get diluted because it's is crossing so many uh, channel from user to um, you know, cohort of the user or the smes then the bpm and then the product manager so in nutshell what happens is the the real reason um, the enterprise users are uh, missing or they you know they're not considered appropriately is because the the product manager is not talking to the real end users or the users who who are going to use the application they talk to somebody else who understands the user and and, and that's largely an issue um so uh, if you break it down by in some points you would understand that you know in 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 an enterprise application what you see is that you know the problem is mostly uh, assumed from leadership or stakeholders point of view and once that we get that assumption it's it's rarely validated and uh, you know um, uh, from the real users point of view sometime the medium to large organization they decide on technology way before they understand the problem and in even if you're talking to a cohort of the user uh, the the cohort is not well uh, diverse and if it is not diverse then you, you're not going to get the the 360 perspective of uh, you know what you need to build and even if you have a cohort in in an enterprise app setup what happens is there are some time business users who are um, who are in the uh, in the organization for for quite long time they understand business in and out so they become very aggressive and they were loud and uh, you know they tend to give you more requirement versus the people who are new or have uh, you know who are timid and uh, not very open to share their feedback 
and um, also we also I've also seen many times that you know business users they tend to provide their problems as well as they provide their own solutions as also and you know well while the solution is not there uh, chartered but they anyhow they you know go ahead and provide those solutions so in in my opinion these are some of the you know six largely um, large big categories because of which the users are uh, appropriately not considered when we build in enterprise applications. Now let's go ahead and, and see, you know, how can we include and what what can, what steps can we take in order to include um, users uh, in our design process in order to provide a better uh, experience. Okay, so um, so we'll we'll take uh, uh, first two problems like leadership and stakeholder assumption of the problems and then. Um, uh, when these assumptions are taken, we sometimes not do not validate it because they, you know, either come from stakeholder or leadership. Sometimes it's difficult to, um, you know, um, penetrate beyond uh, leadership. So uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to ensure that we don't take the product requirement from the leadership or the stakeholders. Um, you know, use leadership as a critique and. Um, only time you should be considering their requirement as the proper requirement if they are one of the genuine persona in your product and they are going to use your product day in, day out. And that's the only time you should take their feedback or their requirement as a genuine requirement. Otherwise, use them as a critique, not as the you know somebody who gives you a requirement. And when you get the requirement or these assumption, always ensure that you validate your hypothesis through user interviews or you know, the data you have gathered in your system. Uh, always go to the uh, end user and validate uh, the assumption so that um, you you understand truly what is the problem and how you're going to solve that uh, problem for the end user. Uh, also use data and the user journey mapping to influence leadership. Uh, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of convincing. You need to go back to the leadership multiple times and this is the time you can take. Uh, if you have any telemetry data or any, any, any other uh, data which you can use to show leadership and you know uh, that the assumption is not right, um, and you should do that uh, as often as uh, as possible. And the last one, you uh, as a product manager, you should build uh, trust with the leadership or the stakeholder. And if, once you have the trust with your leadership and stakeholder, it's easy to <clears throat> excuse me. It's easy to say no um, in, in in such scenarios. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, so what are the problems if we choose technology even before understanding the problem? Uh, now as a product manager, um, our job is to solve the right problem. Um, you know, so you always uh, with the right experience as well. So um, like Steve Jobs said, like, you know, in one of the uh, um, uh, interviews that you got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to find the right technology. Never choose the technology. Uh, Sometimes, you know, we come with a preconceived mindset that, you know, um, you have one or two product line in your own organization, which you want to use, and, and you force that technology on users. And uh, sometimes that's not the right technology, or sometimes that technology is not the right way to solve, um, solve the problem which users are facing. Um, the other one is uh, always uh, understand that you're not limited by the technology. Um, technology is just a ways and means to provide um, as, you know, a mechanism to solve customer problems. So never make technology as your forefront. Um, what you should always focus on the customer um, problems and customer needs. And based on that, find the best technology available in the market. And if you happen to have a technology which is in-house um, developed technology, by all means use it, but never pay attention to technology first and uh, you know, ignore the customer needs. Um, the last three uh, problems which we face generally is like, you know, um, um, the based on the cohort and the users we select in order to do user interviews or for feedback or opinions. Um, ensure that the cohort or the sample of uh, personas you're choosing for your user interviews or different kind of feedback. Um, ensure that that is a well diverse uh, uh, cohort with representation from all major persona types. Um, or, and also identify your most aggressive users. And if possible, keep them separate from rest of the group and have a you know, 
a different meeting with them because as a product manager it is it is your core responsibility that you understand each and if not each and every uh, user but as much as, as many personas you have so every feedback is important so if you have far too many aggressive users in one cohort you would the chances are that you may not be able to uh, you know you may not get right feedback from the users who don't speak a lot who takes time to open up um, so make sure that you know um, your most aggressive users are um, you know separate and you interview them in an isolation or separately from the people who are not very open uh, to share feedback uh, also um, perform your user user interviews uh, in isolation most likely one at a time uh, because uh, in order to build your unbiased and uninfluenced uh, product you need to uh, listen to each user uh, independently in, in isolation. If you have a group meeting where everybody is sharing their feedback, uh, sometimes people get uh, influenced and you know uh, they listen, they hear somebody else, and then they they give you the exact same feedback. You know, um, although they may not be facing the same problem, so it is advisable that you have such meetings in isolation so that you can get um, you know the feedback you need in order to improve your uh, product. Um, also, um, in an enterprise setting, when your users have too much knowledge about your uh, application or business problems, they sometimes tend to provide you uh, problem as well as solutions also, right? By all means, take the problem, but you, know, you can take the solutions as well, but don't get fixed on those solutions. Um, it's the engineering or the product manager's role to find a solution. The users who provide, they offer you a solution, they may be good solution, but always you know, revalidate those solution um, because a user who's providing your solution may not be able to um, focus on all persona type or the technology you're using. Um, so it may not be a best solution in order to you know, implement for the larger audience. So, um, you know, just focus on problem and issues. Don't focus on too much of solution when you're talking to the uh, user. Just understand problem and issues from the uh, as best as you can. And uh, the last one is, as I said, like, you know, never. Um, um, so when you are doing any user interviews, don't offer them solutions uh, because users often they don't know which solution to use and what is, which is the best one or which is a uh, least. Uh, better one for them. So uh, just offer them, uh, you know, just understand their problem and then through uh, your you know, engineering team device a solution, which you believe from the engineering as well as user experience point of view would be the best possible solution. And you can do some design, uh, early design feedback from the customers to understand if the solution which you are building is going to work or not, but never ask which never give an option of multiple solution to the user and then ask them to choose one because they may not be able to choose the best one, uh, you know, what you're offering them. Okay, so with that, we're gonna go move to the last part of the presentation, which is, um, you know, how to measure the success of uh, an enterprise application. Now, um, what I personally would say is that, you know, the very first thing you should do is that you should build a mechanism to collect user feedback and uh, you know you should uh, build uh, the feedback mechanism in such a way where people can provide verbose um, uh, feedback they can where they can provide comments like you know they can tell you they're happy unhappy and if they have an idea they can propose some idea also so if you give them such option they, you would be surprised at how many people would um, provide you a better solution or sometimes you know they would tell you what which part of the product they don't understand and with that rich data you can go back to whiteboard and probably you know devise a better solution um, so um, like satisfaction you need to understand the satisfaction of your customer so um, you know rather than just number how many users are happy or unhappy always try to understand what your users are specifically talking about your product um, when they use in day in day out the other part is also try and understand the depth of use. As an enterprise product, you're gonna, you are going to enable many capabilities day in, day out, uh, and each capability will cater to some particular um, you know, efficiency. You're probably trying to increase their productivity or trying to save some uh, dollars for uh, or revenue for the uh, company. So it is important for you that when you release a feature, 
that it is uh, it is known to the user and they're using it the, the way you have intended. So understand the feature uses. Um, so I call it depth of use. So understand how many feature you've released, what is the usage of each feature, and are you hitting the intended uh, feature uses uh, on a regular basis or not? And if you're not, try and understand that data, why people are not using it. Um, you know, mostly if somebody is not using your feature, the two things, one, either the feature is not discoverable, they don't know there is some, you know, such feature exists in the product, or it is too difficult. So understand that data, go back to whiteboard. If it is too difficult, you know, make it user friendly and go back, you know, re-release or to ship it. And if they don't know about it, then probably you need to do some some little bit of work in the evangelization uh, side. The, the other one you should measure is the efficiency. Uh, in enterprise application, it becomes even more important that every time you release something um, to the uh, production, you, each feature is designed, should be designed in a way that it, it makes the uh, user base uh, you know, more efficient to do uh, whatever job they're doing, whatever activity they're doing. So always measure um, how, uh, how are you improving the efficiency of whatever task or uh, action you are supporting in your uh, application. So I would, in day in, day out, I would measure these three things. Uh, and I, uh, uh, I do that for all my applications. I would recommend that you, you can start with that. And a couple of things which I, I personally feel are not great in, in an enterprise application is like, I've seen many times product managers come and they report like how many users support, uh, use their uh, product. Now in, in enterprise uh, setting, uh, users don't have any option. It's not that you know they have two similar application and they can choose which one to use. It is generally, and um, you create an application, it is pushed to them saying that's the only option they have. So it does not make make any sense when 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 somebody reports like I have five hundred thousand or one thousand user um, using my application. So you know I don't do that unless um, you are in a setup where users have options and. Uh, they can choose which one to use, and then you can show the adoption. Uh, that's a number you should go for. Otherwise, mostly it doesn't happen in enterprise application. The other one, um, there is no point um, reporting like you know what your uh, product can do. You know, uh, um, so let's say you you uh, you have a product which supports some kind of transaction. There's no point you uh, declaring that. Oh, I can support five hundred thousand transaction. Now, that's the core business you are supporting. Like, you know, so um, report the numbers which are useful and meaningful, which says, which tells the true story rather than the product capability. You can, you know, product capabilities are capability. They, they will be the, there always. Um, so report from the user's point of view, report from the problem solving point of view, report from the efficiency and the satisfaction point of view. And, um, you know, uh, you would be surprised that, um, the the product you're going to build will be very different from the product which are um, don't which don't generally consider users um, when they are built so i think um that is all i had for today um, so i'm gonna thank you very much for your time and um, patience for listening to me throughout so i'm gonna stop my uh, sharing my screen now thank you <laughs>